Hello and welcome back to Maker's Muse. So I apologize for the lack of content recently guys. I got super sick and I'm still pretty ill. Massive throat infection. Awesome. But I wanted to do another mesh mixer tutorial for you guys. And it just so happens that David got in touch with me through email and asked me this question. Angus. I am in need of a little help with an STL and was wondering if you could help. I have this weapon from a game a friend once printed for one of his figures and it has an issue. As I was preparing it for printing I noticed a gap between the barrel and the rest of the gun. I'm still new to both Mesh Mixer and TinkerCAD, I was wondering if you could take a look at it and see if you could fix it. Yeah, I thought that's actually a pretty good question and a pretty good way to demonstrate how I would go through the same problem. So let's get stuck into it. Okay, so first you'll need Mesh Mixers, that's in continual development and I'm running the latest beta which was from April 21st and it says, yeah, no guarantees, the latest beta may be unstable but I like to have the, the most cutting edge version of it. So, what we have here is the gun file from David. I'm just going to press W so you can see the lines. And first impressions, it actually looks, it looks okay. You think, okay, it's fine to print. But something about printing STL files, and this is really important, it's something that newcomers often don't understand because it's not really mentioned, you have a term which is called shells. So imagine you have a sphere, that's one shell, but an STL file could have, you know, a few thousand shells, and they don't exactly have to touch each other. An STL file just defines triangles in space. So this gun, from first impressions, looks like it's one shell, but if I go to edit and separate shells to pop up and that's where the issue is so let's move this object browser across and we'll turn one of them off and you can see just like he was he was saying that gun uh, the actual end of it is not attached and if we zoom right in sure enough there's that gap right there so there's a few ways we can fix it, and in this video I'm going to show you how to fix it in Mesh Mixer, and in the next video I'll show you how you would fix it in Tinkercad. Both are completely legitimate and, and perfectly fine methods, but it really just comes down to what your preference is. So, to fix this in Mesh Mixer, first I will hide the original body of the gun, like that. So we're just left with the turret. Turret, I'm not good with um, gun terminology. And what we're going to need to do is essentially stretch the barrel out back into the stock, or the, the body of the gun. So to do that, we want to get these end faces and just pull them, essentially. And the easiest way to select them would be to generate what's called a face group. So we can go to Edit, Generate Face Groups. And see it makes these wacky colours? That makes selecting areas easier. So we can ramp that angle threshold right up. So you can see it's just making it so that's one face group there, one group there, one group there, and the end caps are their own face groups. Except, next we go to select. Make sure our selection brush is not massive, so size down to four, that looks good. And just double click the face groups you want to select. So double click that one, double click that one. All right, so we've got what we want selected. Next we go to deform and transform. And this is where Mesh Mixer is really quite powerful. So we want to just stretch this barrel back. We can just click the arrow where you want to stretch, which direction we want to stretch it in and pull it back. So some arbitrary amount. It was only a small gap, but I'll just pull it back quite a bit and accept that. And now we bring the, the body back and you can see we've got it there. So it is now intersecting. So now we have two options. We can either combine these two parts in Mesh Mixer or then save this file off to be stitched together in another program. And this is really important. So if we just select both and combine them, it looks good. It looks like it should print fine. But we actually still have two shells, even though it's combined again. You know, if we do separate shells, out they come again. And this is a big problem because if you go to slice it, most slices, for example, here I've got Simplify 3D and that one file. If we prepare to print, it looks okay, but if you go down to the area where it's intersecting, 
the slicer is trying to deal with what is a contained space and what isn't and it's made this funky internal void that we really don't want so going back we have two options we can combine and then we can save it off into something like netfab cloud so for example if we go to clouds.netfab upload our file and it will just upload into their cloud servers and stitch those two shells together now you can't use the free version of netfab because it doesn't do this and i don't know why they don't allow it to be done the free version of netfab it makes the free version of netfab just useless in my opinion but that's how it is you may hear that they are rainbow lorikeets gorgeous little birds anyway it's now stitching it and we're going to download it and see what the difference is and check that out solid all the way actually oh no actually tiny oh that's okay tiny little weird artifact there but that's what you want it's solid through the gun and it's stitched together nicely so that's how you can fix it using the netfab cloud service which is free but you are uploading your file to their server so don't do it on anything you don't want other people to see. So that's one method of doing it. The next method is to combine it within Mesh Mixer using the Boolean union function. So let's do that. So go back to having them separated like that. And essentially with the Boolean union, you need to select both and select Boolean union. But stop there. This is one of the limitations in Mesh Mixer where it's unable to combine shells as cleanly as the netfab service is so essentially if these two flat services very low triangle count if I combine them with the boolean union you get a bit of artifacting and it's really not not very nice so to do it within just mesh mixer turn the triangles back on with W we want to add more triangles for it to work with in the union so to do that a little bit long-winded but you basically grab where the intersection is so select again we've made those face groups so we can double click them and then you go to edit and remesh and linear subdivision works well and just ramp that right up 50 percent that's fine we've got some more triangles to work with and the more triangles you have, the less deviation there will be on the final, final object. So that's one side done. Now we need to go back to the gun. I think we should use the uh, generate face groups again, so we can select just the end. Looks pretty good to me. Then select those triangles, and again remesh, ramp it up. Looks pretty good to me. Except, so now when we combine it. Boolean union. You can see it's had to generate these extra triangles, but it's done a pretty good job. Except, done. So, very tiny bit of deviation there, but you're not going to notice this in a scaled down model. So, that's how you can fix this file in Mesh Mixer. I hope you found this helpful, David. Definitely let me know, guys, in the comments if you found this kind of video useful. In the next version, I'll be showing you how to fix this problem using Thinkicad. Anyway, thank you so much guys for watching. If you want to subscribe onto Megas Muse, I do all sorts of video tutorials, 3D printing reviews, and all sorts of stuff, as most of you would well know, and I'd love to have you join, uh, jump on board through subscribing. And also, I have a Patreon. I put up a recent new goal where I'm buying, well, I'm trying to buy some new measuring tools and better filming equipment to bring high quality videos to you, such as something called a vibrometer, which can measure vibrations. Yes, they really do exist. Uh, a decibel meter to tell you actually how loud a 3D printer actually is and all sorts of precision measuring instruments. So I can bring you the highest quality uh, 3D printing reviews on YouTube. Anyway, thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Bye.